Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make some cards inspired by um, succulents. It's kind of a modern theme right now, very popular, and I'm going to be using the stamps uh, that I designed for rubber stamp tapestry called succulents, and there are a lot of um, large images here that are really fun to color in whatever your favorite medium is. We're going to be using some watercolors today, but first thing I want to do is show you what didn't work for me. Uh, so this is the grand idea I had. Um, I thought, I know, I'm going to make kind of like a, uh, a wreath of succulents. Um, I had a stamping gear contraption that I bought a few years ago that I never used very much, but I thought that's what I'm going to use. But um, I ended up just having this this just really jam-packed um, wreath, and I didn't like it. It was just too overwhelming, and uh, to make matters worse, I actually had colored around it with like fuchsia and bright yellow, and it was it was awful. If you look, this is like the colors that I had around it, and it just wasn't working, so I trimmed that down as closely as I could put it on some pattern paper uh, that I'd wanted to work with um, and salvaged it. It's not great and I don't really like it. We're not going to do this card today because of that. Um, I couldn't bear to make it again because I was frustrated with it the whole time, but I just wanted to show you that to A, know that um, everybody makes cards they're not happy with, and B, because you might actually like this idea and you might want to do it, and I just basically stamped um, stamped my images around in a circle and masked and kept on stamping until I had a big mess of succulents. But anyway, that's what we're not doing. <laughs> um, but I just want to let you know that if you feel frustration when you're card making, it isn't just you. We all feel that way. Um, so on this card, this is uh, what we're going to do today. We're going to do a little very simple brush lettering. I am not a um, calligrapher by any stretch of the imagination, but I think these actually look all right. Uh, we're going to do a little masking, and you can decide whether you want to use a few stamps together or if you just want to use one and keep it really simple. The technique is the same either way. Um, and I I did some simple embellishing with washi tape. So it's a it's a very simple card you can make and um you know, it's it's just a great way to use supplies you already have and maybe get a little extra use out of some things. Now, this is just a regular brush tip marker. Um, this one happens to be a Mozart brand, which is kind of, uh, it's very similar to the Tombow markers that a lot of brush letterers use. If you have any brushes like this, try them um, because they're probably going to work just fine. And this is a water-based marker. So what I've done first is I have um, just trimmed down a piece of watercolor paper. This is the Arteza watercolor paper. It's rough on one side and it's smooth on the other. So I'm going to be working on the smooth side. Um, you could really use cardstock for this, Bristol board, uh, hot press watercolor paper, anything that's got a fairly smooth surface that can take water. And we are going to begin stamping. And I'm going to do the, now this is very easy. I'm going to do this one here just to show you how to mask different images, but seriously, use what you have, do what you want. It's, it's, a, it's all all you baby it's all in what you want to make I'm using Ranger archival black mainly because I have um, a waterproof black pen that I can use for any other little uh, flourishes and whatnot now I'm going to be careful because when I did the card there um, I pushed a little too hard and I got a dark thick line and I don't want that to happen so I'm just gonna do fingertips here fingertips give a chance to to uh, um, See, now I didn't get that nice, that dark line. I got a nice, uh, fresh, crisp one. See how dark that was? Because I must have been, like, CPR stamping that to coin a phrase from Tim Holtz. Uh, and so I don't want to do that this time. Now, my tip before about storing your stamps. Keep your masks with your stamps. Because, you know, it takes a little bit of time to cut out those masks out of post-it notes. So, you basically, to make a mask, you stamp on a post-it note. You trim it out really close to the edge and then you can stick that down on top of your stamped image when you want to layer up some images. The next one I'm going to do is this little uh, succulent here and we are going to stamp that over to the edge and I like to work on a scrap of paper so that um, any, uh, any ink won't get on my table and then I won't end up smearing it on the back of my card by accident. And now I'm going to put a mask on top of that See, I, as you can see, I do honestly keep these and keep reusing them. I know probably like a <laughs> more professional YouTuber would cut fresh ones every time, so it looked all fancy, but I'm not fancy. That's one thing you're never going to have to worry about getting here. Too much fanciness. Now, I do have a couple masks for this one because I was doing that wreath, so I actually had to cut an extra one. And we'll put that one down. And we'll do a couple of these. I really like this spiky jade plant. We'll do one up there. And sometimes you will want to press a little bit harder as you're doing layers over masks just to make sure you are pushing the stamp down around those papers. And there you go. 
that's pretty good. And there it looks like everything's together. Now, if you do get a boo-boo like that, like maybe you didn't press very hard, or your stamp wasn't very well inked up, you can use a uh, waterproof pen. Now you can use a like a Micron pen or a pit pen. I'm using my um, Jane Davenport pen. I really do enjoy this fountain pen. Now I put fountain pen safe ink in mine. So if you use a regular ink that, that comes with this, it's not waterproof. You need to specifically get um, fountain pen safe India ink if you want to use that. If you put regular India ink in your fountain pen, it will clog it and ruin it. So I want to make a little border. So I'm just going to draw a little line, make a couple dots. You can do a couple dashes. It really doesn't matter. I love this technique for just doing um, like a nice frame around something because you don't have to worry about having a stick straight line because it looks better the more random it is. I do move my paper because I have smudged my fingers through the wet ink because it takes a little bit to dry. Um, if you do smudge your ink, either your stamping uh, ink, like your Ranger Archival ink, or your pen, you can use a kneaded eraser, but instead of how you normally use a kneaded eraser, which would be to, to just like kind of push and lift, actually gently rub it. This is what a kneaded eraser looks like here. Hopefully I won't have to demonstrate how to remove your ink smudges, but knowing me, I probably will. Um, but I just kind of move my paper so I can avoid sticking my hand in the ink if at all possible. There. So now we get a nice little border. I'm going to dry this and then we're going to come back and do some coloring. We're going to keep the coloring really simple here. I'm just using this very pale aqua um, colored pencil here. This is a Spectrum... Um, it's a Spectrum Aqua markers. They're, they're, um, I'm sorry, pencils. They're watercolor pencils. You can use whatever brand you have. This brand has a lot of shades of beautiful subtle colors, so that's why I'm using this. And plus, this is the set that's always um, that's always next to my office chair upstairs where I sit and create in the winter. I think I was kind of feeling out of sorts too today because I really I'd love creating downstairs in my studio, but it's still so darn cold down there. Um, but anyway, uh, and I am going to do these back here a little bit with some of this darker color as well. This is uh, Albright Drewer pencil. I had a few oddball extras, so they, they go up here in this set as well. You don't have to color perfectly when you're using watercolor pencils because um, we're going to be blending them with water, so if you don't have a perfectly uniform tone, it doesn't matter because you can push the pigment around. And you can overlap colors to make them mix. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now I'm just going to use a watercolor brush and some water. You can use a water brush if you have it. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now the thing that's nice about watercolor pencils is that um, you can go to, you know, color the thing right next to the last thing you colored because you're not going to have as much of an issue with your colors blending into one another. Probably after going to this bright green, I would rinse my brush off just because that is a pretty powerful color. And I'm going to go in and just liquefy the ink on these jade plants. Um, you can really use pretty much any watercolor or um, soft golden Taclon acrylic brush that you might have. As long as the bristles are not um, like really uh, stiff, you're going to be fine. Um, so you don't have to buy special brushes for this if, if you're doing watercolor pencils and you have other brushes already. Just uh, see if you, what you have works. They're not too finicky. You do want something that's usually a little bit firmer than what you watercolor with, but I watercolor with these all the time in there and they're working out just fine. I generally do like a little bit of a stiffer brush for this just because um, I find that sometimes I get a little too much water when I use my regular watercolor brushes, but it really it really is up to you. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much. Now after we get this color, we're gonna do some background and um, I'm, you don't even really have to dry that first, honestly. I am going to use some watercolors in a tin and I thought these, um, Pastel Prima watercolors would be fun because the colors already look really close to what I want. And I'm going to grab a bigger brush here so I can wet my background here. And then, uh, and I'm not being too fussy because I like kind of rough edges. I like it not to look perfect. And I'm going to start off with my latest color that I'm going to use, which will be this yellow. And sometimes I'll flick it on, sometimes I'll paint it on. 
Um, this is a nice one to go around the uh, the flowers, um, the little plants with, because if you do go over them by accident, yellow isn't really going to show up on the green. It's not going to look like clashy. If you went over the green with pink, you might get like brown and muddy mucky color. And again, keep it really loose so that you don't have to um, you don't have to be too careful. You could do a batch of these. These would be really pretty thank you cards for like um, a bridal shower or um, a birthday or baby shower. Anytime where you want to kind of express yourself and get a little creativity out, but you have something, you know, you actually have something you're trying to get done. I'll use some of these aqua colors in there because that will be pretty. And I'm just going to flick those. Now, if you have any puddles, Oh, maybe I'll get some of this lighter pink in there too. See, I feel love with card making because I feel like I don't have to follow any any rules that I might have like watercolor. I can just slap on whatever I want because it's a card. It's going to take me a few minutes. If it doesn't turn out, oh well, that's all right. All right, so I'm going to dry this and then we're going to go on to the brush lettering portion. All right, to make your brush lettering look as neat as can be, I recommend that you get a straight edge and make a couple lines. So um, if you wanna do thank you or happy birthday, you're gonna need two lines. So I'm just going in with a pencil. I'm gonna put one and I'm going to put two. Okay, make sure you have a, about the same amount of space above and between your lines so that you will have room to make the same size letters. And I got a little room back under here that I can do some washi tape embellishing or I could spatter on some more watercolor later if I want to. Um, but you know that's that's pretty much how you want to lay it out now something you want to do before you work on your cards actually practice it um, i know it sounds really silly but just get your hand ready to write those letters even if like you don't need to practice like pages and pages just practice it once make sure that you kind of feel get a feel for it before you do it on your paper then you also want to make sure you're sitting at a comfortable angle it might be tipping your paper um, it might be having a straight on make sure you're comfortable when you're doing this because you don't want your lines to look awkward i'm going to do thank you and I'm using um, a brush that's fairly flexible I'm sorry a marker that's fairly flexible okay and the thing that for me um, to do these letters that improved my letters and they're not great I know but the thing that helped me was just giving myself permission to flex that nib okay you're not gonna hurt it um, at least you shouldn't hurt it um, and these are very inexpensive these Mozart ones they're less expensive than Tombow um, so I could feel a little more confident with that but I'm gonna start with an F I'm, I'm sorry with a T for thank you and I probably won't talk as I draw this because um, I can't talk and write at the same time I will misspell something all right uh, so so I'm going to try to lift up lightly as I go up. I'm going to press down as I come down and finish with a little bit of a curly cue there. I am going to do my H and I'm going to try to keep the same, um, like the same slant to my letters if I can while I am writing. So I want this A to have about the same slant and I'm not good so I'll have to go in and like connect things. Okay, so I am talking well, so sue me. I talk when I write, I can do that. All right, I have a talent. Okay, let's get our N in there. So press down when you're coming down, lift up when you're going up and press down when you're coming down again and lift up. So you're pushing, you're pushing down on your pen as you're coming down, you're lifting up on your pen as you're coming up. So to come up on the K, the K is going to be pushed when you come down. We come up, do a little loop, push down for the bottom of the K, and there we have the word thank. I know it's nothing to write home about, but we got it. Now for you, we're going to, uh, I like to exaggerate the Y, I'm going to come up, press down, come up, I'm going to press down, we're going to loop it, up, up, on the tip if you can. Now you're not going to get a super fine um, tip on this, I mean, maybe you would with a Tombow, I'm not sure. Um, but it's just going to be a little bit thinner. It's not perfect, but that's probably me. It's probably user error. Press down, up lightly, press down, and there you go. And then if you want to make it like a little sharper, like maybe that's just kind of bland because it is a little bland, you can go ahead and grab your um, waterproof pen. You can dry this if you want to, um, if you're afraid that your ink will, will feather because that's still a little wet. I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, we'll see what happens. And something I like to do is when I start, I'll actually rest my pen for a second so I get a little, a little point on the uh, ink. And I like to flourish too. So I might do a little extra curl when I'm doing this because um, I have that framework already. And then I'm just doing basic cursive here. 
whoops, I forgot my basic cursive. And then if you want to do a little flourish, you can do a little do a little squiggle any place you have a uh, letter that doesn't have anything happening. So again, I'm going to touch my pen down and get that little ball of ink. And you can do a little flourish any way you want to. I know it's nothing fancy, but sometimes if you don't really know what you're doing, just less is more is a little bit better. So now I'm going to dry this and then we can erase our pencil line. All right, got my kneaded eraser here. I'm just going to kind of pull it out into a little point and I'm just going to go in and try to only erase the uh, pencil line just to make sure I don't disturb um, any of the ink because like I said before this you can use to remove ink smudges so I want to be real gentle with this so I don't do any more than I have to so there you can see um, it's not bad it totally passes as a card I think I think it's sweet and I would love to, to get a card like this now if you feel like you want a little bit more pizzazz you can totally go back in with your brush and flick on some more paint I might regret this in a second but Hey, better for me to regret it on my card than for you to regret it on your card. That is my motto. I will make the mistake. I will make a mess so you don't have to. And then I can even go in and make some of these speckles a little bit more prominent if I want to. And if you decide you don't like it, you can blot it away, which is another fun thing. I feel like I just wanted a little more pink in there. I'll spread that around, do a little blotting, it'll be fine. That's the nice thing about working with a waterproof ink is that um, you don't have to worry about it bleeding if you decide you want to go in and do more. Now, if I had gotten on top of that blue, that blue, the, like the um, waterproof, water, not waterproof, water base marker would blend, but I really don't have to worry about it with the rest of it. One more quick dry and then we can adhere our card together. Okay, that's dry enough. We are going to just do a simple adhering here nothing too fancy this would be a great one to do with uh um in batches because you could do all of your calligraphy at once you could do all of your you know gluing together at once i'm also gonna need some washi tape i found some really pretty um just a beautiful turquoise and pink themed washi tape oh my gun is getting gummed up here that happens with this watercolor paper I'm not sure why it does not want to stick to this and doesn't that make an awful screechy noise sorry about that guys it's just one of those days okay <laughs> we're gonna stick that down there right in the middle and then I'm gonna put a few strips of washi tape down I think I'll use these three I think they're kind of pretty and actually I really like this tape because it tears really easily. Of course, now that I say that, it's going to be a mess when I try to use it. It's not gonna tear, it's gonna be awful. But oh no, look at that, it's tearing. It's being fine, it's behaving. All right, we'll put a couple more strips on here and we are gonna be good. If you want to find the products that I use today, you can find them from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. Look them up at pegstamps.com. Don't forget to use the coupon code in the video description for free shipping on your order. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.